Time for a daily shot of reality. Just a little bit of perspective, not a lot. And now that I've done this whole thing, I hope these coins come back out. So there are two scenarios that are very widely used to build cases for gold or silver ownership. The first is that had you bought gold in the year 2000, well, you would have seen a 7x gain since the non-adjusted price of gold was somewhere around $270. And if you compare the value of an ounce of gold today against that $270 that you spent then, well, you did pretty well. That's easy to see and that's hard to contest. Now the second is that had you bought gold in the year 2011, you'd be about where you are today. And that one isn't actually true. The absolute peak for gold in 2011 was $1,825. The new all-time high is almost $2,080. But people will cite inflation-adjusted figures to make that case. Now if you took the same scenarios for silver, in the year 2000, the price of silver was around $5. So it has seen a nearly 5x gain in that scenario. Once again, that's without inflation adjustment. It's just a simple case of buying silver 22 years ago. Now in 2011, silver hit 48.60. So had you bought silver at the height in 2011, well, your silver would be worth about half that today. So let's just be really clear here. There is no well-meaning intent behind picking a starting point 22 years ago or 11 years ago. Both of them are misleading, and I have never seen anybody give both of those scenarios at once. Both cases give compelling evidence because you can simply show the charts and do the math, and nobody can call math into question. But if you're using either one of those scenarios to build your case for buying or not buying, you are fooling yourself. And if you're letting somebody else give only one of those scenarios to build your case, well, you're letting them fool you. None of us can go back in a time machine and make those purchases to begin with. And anyone who did make those purchases at specific highs 11 years ago or at specific lows 22 years ago, they probably made other purchases along the way. And those purchases would average this whole thing out. Now what I've found is that because I buy regularly, my purchases have appreciated over time. I don't have the 7x return on my gold purchases and neither does anyone else making videos using those statistics. I also don't have a 10% loss when I adjust for inflation, like you'll see in the comments every now and then from a person who thinks that Bitcoin is the only way to go. I don't have that best case gain. I don't have that worst case stagnation, I guess you'd call it. Nobody else does either. I don't have it because I buy regularly. I did not buy one time 22 years ago and then stop. I also didn't buy one time 11 years ago and then stop. So YouTube Studio has a stats block and that block lists other videos that your audience has watched recently. And I rarely pay attention to it, but I spotted two videos that use that silver purchase 22 years ago scenario. And it surprises me anytime I see that stat because it's so intentionally misleading. It's an eyes wide shut situation. I don't mean that in the Tom Cruise sneaking into a masquerade orgy kind of way, I mean that it's an intentional blindness. Buying gold does not guarantee you a 7x return, and buying silver does not guarantee you a 5x return. The opposite, of course, is true as well. Gold's not going to stagnate for 11 years. Silver won't lose half its value over the next 11 years. You just can't take hand-picked historical performance and apply that to the point that you happen to have come in. I mean, you can. You can also jump in a taxi driven by a chimpanzee. It just doesn't seem like a good idea. So this video is a little bit of a check-in, maybe a little bit of a reality check. And sometimes it just feels like I'm a bit of a fun hater when I bring logic into the equation. But I've been plugged into the community here for a few years now and I wonder what it does to our brains to only see these extreme cases presented as fact. I think it monkeys with their heads. Clinically maybe even. I think monkeyed up brain might even be the clinical term for a certain kind of depression. I'm gonna have to google that one. But the truth is that we don't know what's going to happen. 
We hope it'll work out in our favor. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But the realistic extremes, they aren't going to be based on two specific scenarios that are picked out of an infinite number of possibilities. Now, all of this is important if you're serious about buying gold as a savings. Now, if you're doing it for fun or you're buying on a long shot, the extreme case scenarios, they might actually be generally entertaining. But if you're using hard-earned money to get into the precious metals game, then it's just good to have a full view of how it's performed in the past because that helps you clear up future expectations. Now, prices are going to go up and prices are going to go down. And if you bought last week and you're concerned today that you've already lost value, well, that's the kind of trap that selective scenarios present. You have not sold yet, or at least I assume you haven't sold yet, so you haven't lost anything. And I imagine 11 years from today, you won't be looking at any kind of loss regardless. And a quick note, if you've been worried this whole time that I messed up a buffalo or two with that shot glass stunt at the beginning, I used an eagle at the bottom. Just to make sure everything was safe, it was a calculated risk. That's one more positive for 22 karat gold. Back to the point though. These drops in spot price, well, they give us a chance to get in on discounted purchases, at least now and then, and I don't really see any other way to look at it. Sometimes you hit them, sometimes you don't. We all know by now, though, that gold and silver don't only go up, regardless of the noise about what it's done since the year 2000. Now, you can pick any point over the last 22 years to tell whatever story you'd like, anywhere between that 7x gain to no movement whatsoever. But any practical buying schedule is going to result in average costs over time. But that's going to be made along an upward trend line that's gone from $247 an ounce to wherever it is today when you're watching this. So you might be coming off of a $30 drop in spot price since your last purchase, but that just isn't the point. The point is holding on to wealth over time, and I'd say it does that pretty well. Okay, so I think we got it covered. No further shots needed, but let us know what you think. Are you into this stuff because somebody sold you on a 7x return, or are you in it because of practical reasons? And if you took advantage of that price drop and made a purchase, let us know that too. Regardless though, while you're there, be sure to hit that like button. If you found any of this interesting, be sure you're subscribed with that notification bell turned on if you'd like to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.